Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how I made this cute everyday princess dress. But before continuing, I want to take a moment and give you all a big thank you. Because of your love and support, I was able to invest in a new camera. And isn't it cute? I'm very excited to use it and hopeful that it'll improve the quality of my videos. So again, thank you all so, so much for your love and support. Every like, every comment, every purchase in my Etsy, every tag on Instagram, everything that you do makes me so happy and it means the world to me. So thank you so much. I'm very excited to keep making these videos and I hope that I'll continue to improve for you. So let's change the camera and continue making this dress. So now that we have the new camera plugged in and going, we can get back to making this dress. And when I was making this dress, I was thinking I wanted something casual and cute for everyday wear, but something that could be dressed up very easily and something with definite princess vibes. And as you can see, I have made three versions of this dress. The version that I'm wearing is made from a cotton viscose blend. The purple version, which you'll be seeing in the video, is made from viscose. And I made this cotton version with flowers at the neckline. So I've definitely enjoyed this pattern and think it has a lot of flexibility with its design and colorways and is open to your creativity. And if you like this dress, definitely check out my Etsy where you can download the PDF pattern and hopefully make a dress like this for yourself. But otherwise, I'm very excited to share my process, so let's get going. For materials, I will be using five meters of this purple floral viscose, which has a width of about 55 inches or 140 centimeter. This fabric is so soft and lightweight and it feels perfect for summer. I will also be using a 30 centimeter zipper and matching thread. I would have preferred a slightly longer zipper, perhaps 35 or 40 centimeters, but I already had this one on hand. The first thing you will want to do is go to my Etsy and download the PDF pattern. I have put a link down below. Next, print out the pattern on the correct paper size, US letter or A4, and make sure it is 100% scale. After printing, you can check the dimensions of the square on the top left corner of page 1, just to make sure everything is the right size. Next, you can assemble the 56 pages into a grid that is 8 pages across and 7 pages tall. You can trim the margins as needed and tape the pages together to create the pattern. Now the pattern is quite large and may take some time to assemble, so please work carefully and slowly making sure everything lines up. And after putting the pattern together, you can cut the pattern to your size. Within the instructions PDF, there is a size chart and more details to help you determine your correct size. The pattern sizes are indicated by the bust size in inches, so a size 39 is for a 39 inch bust size. And for example, my bust size is 38 inches. So for my purple viscose dress, I decided to size up and I cut the pattern to size 39. And then I decided I wanted to sew my dress with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance. The larger seam allowance will help take in my dress just a smidge. But when making the second version of my dress from the cream and floral viscose cotton blended fabric, I decided I would try sizing down to the 37. And for that dress, I sewed the seams with a one centimeter seam allowance. And by sizing down, the second version of my dress came out looking a little more fitted and snug. I do recommend choosing a size closest to your own. And depending on if you size up or size down, you can adjust the seam allowance as needed. 
What is important though is that you use the same seam allowance width for both the top and bottom of your dress. That way the seams will match up when you sew the waist. And of course, a great way to check the fit is to make a mock-up. You can use some scrap fabric and test out the bodice. You can check to see what seam allowance you'd like to use, if you'd like to take in the back a smidge or let it out, and if you'd like to raise or lower the neckline. And you can just check the overall fit of the bodice. You can also see the two sleeve options. On the left is the sleeve that is a little more free and finished with a simple rolled hem. And on the right is the sleeve that has a sleeve band for a subtle puff effect. Now in this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to make the puff sleeve, but if you prefer the other sleeve style, you can just finish that bottom raw edge with a simple rolled hem. After making your mock-up, you can try it on and make sure everything fits comfortably. You can check that there's room in the back for the zipper and that the sleeves are a comfortable fit. You can also check and see if you'd like to lengthen or shorten the waist of your skirt portion. To check this, you can tie a ribbon around your waist to help you find your natural waistline. Then you can measure from the bottom of the bodice to your waistline and compare that measurement to the pattern. Don't forget to account for the seam allowance of one or one and a half centimeters at the waist of the bodice and skirt pattern pieces when comparing these measurements. Now, if you are particularly longer or shorter waisted, you may want to shorten the skirt pattern pieces. For example, if you wanted to shorten the skirt pattern pieces by two centimeters, then you would use a ruler and a pen to mark evenly across the pattern how much you would like to take it in. Measure down from the line indicated shorten or lengthen here and mark one line indicating the total amount you would like to shorten the two centimeters, and then mark a halfway point of one centimeter. You will use these two lines as guides to fold the pattern, folding behind the needed amount to shorten. After folding this amount behind it, you can tape the pattern down and you will repeat this evenly for all the other skirt pattern pieces. And if, for example, you wanted to lengthen the skirt of your pattern by two centimeters, then you would draw two parallel lines equal distance apart. The distance would be how much you want to lengthen the waist of your skirt. So in this case, two centimeters. After drawing the two parallel lines two centimeters apart, you would next cut your pattern piece at the line indicated shorten or lengthen here. Then you would tape the pattern to either side of the line, making sure that they have been evenly spread apart. You can then tape them down and trim the pattern as needed. Again, you would repeat this evenly for all other skirt pattern pieces. Now that we have the pattern sorted and we've made the mock-up and noted any changes we want to make to our pattern, we can move on to cutting our pattern out of our fabric. For my dress, I cut out two skirt side front pieces, two skirt side back pieces, two skirt back pieces, one skirt front cut on the fold, two sleeves, two sleeve bands, four bodice back pieces, two bodice front pieces cut on the fold, four bodice side back pieces, and four bodice side front pieces. Again, I had to work very carefully when cutting these pieces out since the viscose is a bit slippy and slinky. But now that I have all of my pieces cut out, we can move on to assembling the dress.
to start, I will match my center front bodice piece to my front side bodice pieces. I will match the curved edges together with right sides touching. I recommend starting at the bottom edge and working your way up to the armpit, pinning the curved edges to one another as you go. After pinning, I sew my bodice front to my bodice side front using one and a half centimeters of seam allowance. First, I straight stitch, again, starting sewing at the bottom edge and working up. Then I go back and zigzag finish the raw edges. The next thing I do is press the seam allowance towards the center bodice piece and top stitch it down. I will top stitch all of my seams down, but this is just something extra I like to do because I like the finished look and I like my seam allowance secured down. You, however, may choose to skip the top stitching and you may prefer to finish your seams with an entirely different method. The way you finish your seams is totally up to you. And you will repeat this for the other side front bodice piece as well as for your lining. This is how it should look once all four of your bodice side front pieces have been sewn to your two bodice front pieces. Next, I match the straight edges of my bodice side front piece to my bodice side back piece. I match the straight edges together with right sides touching and again, I like to pin starting from the bottom working towards the top armpit. After pinning, I sew these edges together, once again with a straight stitch, then a zigzag stitch, and then I press my seam allowance towards my bodice side back and top stitch it down to secure. Now we can attach our bodice back piece to our bodice side back, matching the curved edges together with right sides touching. Again, I'm going to match these edges together starting at the bottom and pinning my way working up. Then I will straight stitch the seam with a one and a half centimeter of seam allowance, zigzag stitch the raw edge, and top stitch the seam allowance down towards my bodice back piece. I will repeat all of these steps for the other side and the lining layer. Next, I'm going to join my bodice front to my bodice back at the shoulders. With right sides together, I match the top shoulder edges to one another, pin and then sew. I will straight stitch, zigzag stitch, and then Press the seam allowance towards the bodice back and top stitch it down. This is how it should look once all four of your shoulder seams have been made, two for the lining and two for the outer layer. The next thing we can do is create our sleeves and attach it to our bodice. First, I quickly check the sleeve band length. I want it to fit comfortably around my upper arm with a little ease room. Next, I will use chalk to mark the stars indicated on the pattern. Between these stars is where I will sew a gathering line of stitching. After sewing a straight line of stitches set to the longest length, I can then pull the thread of this line of stitches and gather down the sleeve's bottom edge so that it is the same length as the sleeve band. Next, I'm going to pin my sleeve band to the bottom edge of my sleeve. The right side of my sleeve band will be facing the wrong side of my sleeve. After pinning, I will sew my sleeve band to my sleeve, taking care as I sew over top the gathers. 
I will first straight stitch just a bit above the gathering line to hide it, and then finish the raw edge with a zigzag stitch. This is how the sleeve should be looking. Next, I'm going to fold the sleeve band over towards the front and press the seam allowance down. I also ironed the bottom edge of the sleeve band up about one centimeter. After pressing the seam allowance of the sleeve and sleeve band down and pressing the bottom raw edge of the sleeve band up, it should be easy to fold the sleeve band over one more time. This time, the bottom edge of the sleeve band should cover and hide the seam allowance. You can then pin it in place. After pinning it in place, you can top stitch it down to create the finished sleeve band. You will want to repeat this for the other sleeve. Folding the sleeve band over one more time to cover and hide the seam allowance, pinning it in place, and then top stitching it down. With both sleeve bands attached to the sleeves, the next thing to do is fold the sleeves in half and sew the sides together. You can pin the sides together, starting at the bottom and working your way up, then straight stitch, finish the edge with a zigzag stitch, and if you like, top stitch the seam allowance down. Next, I'm going to sew the sleeves to the outer layer of the bodice. You can set the lining layer aside for now. To insert the sleeves into the armholes, I'm going to start by matching the side seam of my sleeve to the side seam of my bodice with right sides touching. The side seam of the bodice will be where the side back is sewn to the side front. Match the seams together and pin, working your way up either side of the sleeve towards the top of the sleeve. You will pin the sleeve smooth and flat into the armhole until you reach the top where your gathering line of stitching begins. Once you reach your gathering line of stitches at the sleeve head, you can pull the threads and gather down the head of the sleeve to fit into the armhole. I like to take a little extra care and measure the gathers to make sure they are symmetrical on either side of my top shoulder seam. Once I am satisfied with my sleeve pinned into the armhole of my bodice, I sew it in place. First, with a careful straight stitch, taking care as I stitch down over top the gathers, and then I trim the edges, zigzag stitch the raw edges, and I even top stitch the seam allowance towards the bodice. This is how your bodice will look with both sleeves attached. You can set the bodice outer layer and lining aside while we assemble the skirt for our dress. Now I want to take a quick moment and talk about the stars I have added to the skirt pattern pieces that I hope will make assembly easier. Each side of the skirt pattern has been marked with a star, and this is to help make matching the sides of the skirt together easy. 
all you have to do is match the stars. So let's start by matching the skirt front to the skirt side front. Match the sides with one star together, pin starting at the top, working and pinning your way down, and then you can sew. First straight stitch, zigzag stitch the raw edges, and then you can top stitch the seam allowance towards the skirt front. Next, let's match the skirt side front to the skirt side back. Match the sides with three stars together and pin starting at the top working down. After pinning, you can sew, straight stitch, zigzag stitch, and then top stitch the seam allowance towards the side back. Finally, we can match the skirt side back to the skirt back. Match the sides with two stars together and pin, starting at the top and working down. After pinning, you can sew, straight stitch, zigzag, and top stitch the seam allowance towards the skirt back. And now our skirt has been assembled and is ready to be attached to our bodice. We will now match the waist edge of our skirt to the waist edge of our bodice, and we want the right sides touching. Start by matching the center front of the skirt to the center front of the bodice and pinning these edges together. Pin the waist edges together working from the center front towards the back edges, taking care to match and align the seams as you work. Once the waist edges of the bodice and skirt have been pinned together, you can now sew along the waist and finish by top stitching the seam allowance towards the bodice. As you can see, the dress is starting to come together. So let's start the finishing touches by adding the lining. First, match and pin the bodice outer layer to the lining layer all along the neckline, making sure to pin right sides touching, and do take care to match the shoulder seams. Next, sew the bodice outer layer to the lining layer all along the neckline, pivoting at the sharp corners at the back of the neckline. After sewing, you can clip the seam allowance to make turning easier. And if you're feeling extra posh, you can understitch the seam allowance to the lining, which will also help turning the neckline. Once the lining is attached to the bodice all along the neckline, I like to quickly finish the raw waist and armhole edges of my lining with a zigzag stitch. So here is what we're working with. The skirt is sewn to the bodice at the waist, and the bodice is sewn to the lining at the neckline. You can also see that I have understitched my clip seam allowance to the lining all along the neckline. The next thing to do will be add the zipper and sew up the back. To 
To add the zipper, I am first going to use chalk to mark where I want the zipper to end. My zipper will start at the neckline where the bodice is sewn to the lining, and the zipper will end a few inches past the waist. I use chalk to mark this on both sides of my bodice. Next, I match the back edges of my dress together and pin, taking care to match the waist seam and neckline perfectly together. And I pin all the way down the back. I do not pin the lining. Now this next part may seem odd, but I promise it will work out. Starting at the neckline, I am going to sew a long length basting stitch down to where I want my zipper to end. At the point where my zipper will end, I am going to change my machine stitch settings back to a normal length stitch. So to repeat, I am sewing the back edges of my dress together with a straight stitch. From the top edge of the neckline to the ending point of the zipper, I will sew using a long length basting stitch. Once I reach the point where the zipper will end, a point I've marked with chalk, I will change back to a regular length stitch, and then sew the rest of the back edge of the dress. Next, I will use an iron to press open that back seam. You can also press open the back edges of the lining. And this is how the center back seam of the dress should look. Notice that the back edges of the lining have not been sewn together. Just a basting stitch from the neckline to the zipper end point and a regular stitch from the zipper end to the bottom edge of the dress. Now I am going to pin my zipper into the center of the seam we just created. I basically want the teeth of my zipper to be nestled right in the center of the seam we sewed with the basting stitch. I'm going to carefully place and pin my zipper into the back seam, the top of my zipper starting at the neckline where my bodice is sewn to the lining and ending a few inches below the waist. Next, I am going to change to the zipper foot on my sewing machine and sew the zipper in place, working slowly and carefully. Once I've sewn both sides of my zipper into the seam, I can now carefully cut away the basting stitches. And voila, a zipper has been installed. Now all we have left to do is hand sew the lining and hem the bottom edge. For the lining, I'm going to start by turning my dress inside out and pushing the sleeves through the lining's armholes. Next, I'm going to fold the edges of my lining inward, pin them to the seam allowance of my bodice and hand sew them. You can do this with the dress lying flat but I find it easier to do it on my mannequin. As you can see, I am folding all of the edges of my lining at the armholes and the waist inward and then pinning them to the seam allowance of my bodice, carefully trying to match the seams. Once I am satisfied, I hand sew the lining to the seam allowance of the bodice. I also sew the lining to the zipper, careful not to get too close to the zipper teeth. As I hand sew, I only use multiple small stitches and I'm careful to only sew the lining to the bodice's seam allowance. While this step 
of hand sewing the lining to the bodice can be a bit time consuming. I do think it creates a very nice clean finish to the dress and I really like the final result so I do think it's worth the extra time. As an alternative to this lining method, you could always finish the neckline with bias tape or a facing. But here's what the inside of my dress looks like with the complete lining. Again, I think it gives it such a nice and tidy finish and I really like the guts of this dress and I like finishing in this method. Of course, again, you could always choose to finish your dress in a different method. You could make a facing or you could finish with a bias tape along the neckline. And now that the lining has been added to the dress, the only thing left to do is trim and then hem the bottom edge of your dress. This is a great opportunity to try it on and check out how long the dress is. You may want to use safety pins or chalk to mark how short you want to trim your dress. I, of course, was very satisfied with the length of my dress and I just trimmed the bottom edge the tiniest bit to even out the bottom edge. After trimming that little bit, I went ahead and gave the bottom edge of my dress a very simple rolled hem. For the hem, all I did was fold over the bottom edge, just the tiniest bit, and stitch it down. Then, to completely hide the raw edge, I folded it over one more time and stitched it down again. And that was how I finished the bottom edge of my dress. After everything was sewn, I took a moment and pressed the neckline and the bottom edge of my dress with an iron. And here you can see a little bit more of the details of the dress, what the understitching looks like at the neckline, and what some of the top stitching looks like. Overall, I'm very happy with the way this came out. And I'm very excited to show you how it looks when worn.
and thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video and would like to see other fun DIY videos, definitely like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.